Let somebody shout hallelujah. Let's open our Bibles. Genesis 2, 15 to 17. The Lord God placed man in the garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, You may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. Second scripture is Genesis chapter 3. We want to read 1 to 3. Genesis 3, 1 to 3. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, Did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the tree in the garden? Of course, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said, you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. And the third scripture is from Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21. Proverbs 18 21. The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. Shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for yet another opportunity to look into the perfect law of liberty. Thank you for homes and marriages represented on this platform. Thank you for the new wine that you are about to pour into lives and into families. Thank you for the entrance of your word bringeth light and understanding to simple hearted people. Father, please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Let your word heal our hearts, heal our homes, heal our lives. As many marriages that are shaking, Father, please relocate them to a firm foundation. At the end of our discourse this morning, let there be a resolve in the heart of your children to make a better home. Let it be well with all of us. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. This morning, we are looking at a topic we call communication in marriage. In furtherance to the discourse on love is not enough. Communication in marriage is one of the ingredients that one needs when love is not enough. So today we are looking at communications in marriage. Now the first two scriptures we have read, it talks about communication between four people in two sets. One between God and Adam. And second between Satan, represented by the serpent, and Eve. It's assumed that there must have been one in between, which is between Adam and Eve. Now, in Genesis 2, 16, 15 to 17, God told Adam, that fruit, don't eat it. You can eat any other fruit, but this one is the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. The day you eat it, you die. Now, when Satan asked Eve about the tree, Eve added her own to it. He said, God said, we should not just don't eat it, but we should not touch it. Because the day we eat or touch it, we will die. But from this first scripture we read, there was no time that God talked about touching. God talked about eating. So, two possibilities there. Either... If exaggerated instruction from God. Because if was not there when God was giving that instruction to Adam. So whether she exaggerated that instruction. Or maybe Adam purposely exaggerated the instruction. Knowing who Eve was. That I should not talk about just eating alone. Let me tell her that God said we should not touch it. Because from touching she can move to eating. But either way. There was communication breakdown. And that foundation is what we are building on. 
to look at communication in marriage. Proverbs 18.21 says, Life is in the tongue. Death is in the tongue. The way you use it determines what you get. Communication involves the use of language. Looking at it from the Latin point of view, it is from the word lingua. And lingua means tongue. So communication comes through the word tongue. A couple are from the same place. Let's say they are both houses. Or they are both idomas. They speak the same language. And somebody will come and say, those couple are having misunderstanding. <laughs> and the question I ask is, what is the misunderstanding? Is it that if they are Hausa couples, they don't know that in Hausa, Zo means come. Nago de means thank you. So what is the misunderstanding? They are both understanding, they speak in the same language. And you say they are having misunderstanding. How? And there is a simple answer to that question. In marriage, communication is not about language. But the basic problem why people who are married to each other, speaking the same language, are still having misunderstanding, is not because of the language, it's because they are not listening to each other. Do you know how arguments go? You must have experienced it with your spouse or those who are married. When you argue, it's not always about the point of the argument in marriages. Most of the time, it's about you and your view or your perspective. So while the other person is talking, you are not listening. He's trying to make a point. What is this place doing on the ground? You don't eat and drop plate on the ground. The man is making a point. But the man is not listening. The man is thinking of the next thing to say. And rather than see the point that the man is, woman is making, the next thing the man will say that I am the man of this house and you don't tell me where the topo plate. Can you see that the misunderstanding is not in the language? Because they are not even listening to each other in the first place. The misunderstanding is because of the selfishness in their argument. Everybody wants to win an argument, win a quarrel, and in most cases, lose relationship and lose marriages. Now, communication transcends the physical talk. That's why I address that question I ask that we understand the same language and we are still having misunderstanding. It's not about talk physically in marriage. In marriage, communication is one heart talking to another heart. Not one mouth talking to another mouth. They used to explain to us in those days the concept of bedroom voice. People whisper to each other when they are at peace and are in love. And people shout at each other when they are at war and have hatred. I've not seen somebody begin to shout, You are beautiful! You are good! No. They whisper it. Madam, his cloth is looking good on you. But when they are abusing themselves, Hey, I go! Their shouts, their voice is increasing. That is because when they are angry with each other, their hearts are far away and they tend to shout. But when they are at peace and, and, and in love, their hearts are close and they tend to whisper. That is when they say you use bedroom voice. Some couple are now so close to each other that they don't even need to talk in most cases. They look at each other and they understand each other's language. I pray that God will help us. That each and every one of us will take our relationship to that level. Where just the ordinary look will let you know what your spouse is talking about. May we be that knitted in our homes in the name of Jesus. Now we'll be dealing with practicals in this particular edition. So practical number one. Take out a sheet of paper. Write three things. You really want your spouse to hear. Maybe you have been telling him he's not listening. Or you don't even know how to say it. Write it out. No matter how bad it is, write it out. It could be that you want to tell him he has mouth odor. You don't know how to say it. You want to tell him he's not good in bed. You don't know how to say it. You want to tell her she's a terrible cook. You don't know how to say it. Or you dislike his friends. Or she talks too much. Things like that are heavy to say. So put it down. And send it to the admin of this platform. The admin will collate it and then return it to the platform. 
and everybody will have the full list. In that place, nobody knows what each person's spouse is writing. And then recommend it for your spouse to go through the whole list. Honor the whole list. And you must have picked out your own points there. That is your assignment. For marriages, people enter for different reasons. Some enter for the right reasons. Others enter for the wrong reasons. Wrong reasons like business connection. I want to marry Dangote's daughter. Wrong reasons like political power. I want to marry Buari's son. Wrong reasons like spiritual power. I just want to be Bishop Oedepo's son-in-law. Wrong reasons like family name. Wrong reasons like frustration and insecurity. I'm tired of staying in that house. I want any man now will go with him. Wrong reasons like fame or wealth. You can add your own reasons. A lot of wrong reasons why people marry. But there are right reasons for marriage. These reasons will include companionship. Genesis 2, 18a. Companionship. Mutual assistance. Genesis 2, 18b. Procreation. Genesis 1, 28. And for sexual satisfaction. 1 Corinthians 7, 9. These are biblical purpose for marriage. Purpose is outside this. It's not, not biblical. God says it's not good for the man to be alone. Companionship. Let us send our help me mutual assistance. Multiply, replenish the world or the earth. Create procreation. If you cannot hold yourself, go and marry. It's better to be married than to born. Sexual satisfaction. Those are reasons to marry. Some of us have married for these reasons, which are the right reasons. But marriages are still breaking down. Why? It may just be that marriages are breaking up because of communication breakdown. So in this discourse, I want to present the research of an award-winning marriage counselor, Gary Chapman. And she carried out a research in 1993 to look for what we today call the love languages and that is the marriage language for communication this research spanned through six continents of the world so it is not limited to one particular race or creed her position has been empirically proved and has been accepted globally so this morning we want to look at that research work break it down, situate it with our homes and also add some biblical character to give it a biblical or a Christian perspective. Praise the Lord. Now these are some questions or three questions I want you to carefully consider. Your answers to these three questions will place you in one of those five categories. Love language is the language of a person. The language the person understands. Not English, not Yoruba, not Hausa, not Igbo. No, not French. I mean emotional language of a person. So how beautiful will it be if you understand the emotional language of your spouse? Marriage becomes easy. So answer these three questions I'm about to ask. And your answer will put you in one of these five categories. Number one. How do I express love to others? Number two, what do I complain about the most? Number three, what do I request for most often? Honest answer to these three questions will put you in one of these five categories. One, the category of words of affirmation. That is a love language. Number two, the category of quality time. That is another love language. Number three, the category of gifts. That is another love language. Number four, the category of act of service. That is another love language. And lastly, the category of physical touch. That is another love language. Now, that research carried out in 1993 proved that all human beings express themselves through one of these five means that I've mentioned. It will be very easy for you to cope in your marriage if you know the one that your wife or your husband is running with 
for possessing. So we look at number one, words of affirmation. And as I said, we are going to also add biblical point of view. And somebody that fits into that category of words of affirmation is our Lord Jesus Christ. John 21, 15 to 17. Now, Jesus was God. He knew that Peter loved him, but he wanted to hear Peter say it. First of all, he said, Peter, lovest thou me more than these other people here? He said, yes, to feed my sheep. He asked again, lovest me thou more than these people? He said, yes, feed my lamb. For the third time, lovest thou me more than this? Three times. Because he wanted to hear him say it. There is a saying that action speaks louder than voice. That one is not so for people in this category. For them, words speak louder than action. They want to hear you say it. No matter how you act it, they want to hear you say it. Those kind of people, if you are married to a wife whose love language is words of affirmation, you buy her clothes, you give her the best holidays on earth, you buy her a car, you spend time with her, you make her happy, you take her out, you do all the good things. <laughs> and then you don't open your mouth to tell her that, darling, I love you. Oh. She doesn't believe you love her. Until you say it. That is that category. They want you to say it. If you don't, they will not accept it. It's your spouse. Somebody like that. Watch her. Watch him. When you tell some people, I love you. Maybe you tell your wife in the morning, I love you. You say, Oga, no be love will go chop. Go and bring money. It is clear. It is obvious. Your wife is not a words affirmation kind of person. For some people, just tell them, Madam, you are beautiful. Then they will begin to blush. From their head to their toe will turn red. Anything you ask of them at that time, you will get it. Because of what you said. So, is your spouse like that? Now, this is a test. This test will help you to determine if your spouse falls into this category. Verbally compliment your spouse every day for the next one month. That's the test. Verbally compliment your spouse every day for the next one month. Now, watch her. If there's a change in her character, watch him. If there's a change in his character, if things are better from his own side or from her own side, the compliment could be, You are beautiful. Oh, this your food is sweet. Oh, I like this your shoe. Just simple, simple compliments. Wow, I like the way you finish dressing up early. Ah, this is a new you. It's a compliment. If you see her after telling her that you like the way. She dressed up very early that you people will not be late. Watch her the next day. If she dressed early again, oh, she loves to hear you compliment her. That's what it means. Now, category number two is the category of quiet time. Luke chapter 10, 42. Luke 10, 42. And I want to put Mary, the sister of Lazarus, in this category. She loves quality time. Quality time is spending time, but not just time. The quality must be emphasized. Now, if you are married to a woman whose love language is quality time, and you leave home 6 or 7 a.m. in the morning, you come back 10, 11 p.m. in the night, and then your marriage is catching. And then you are wondering, why? I'm making enough money. She should be happy. Oh, uh, you don't understand our love language. Our love language is not the money you are bringing. Our love language is the time you spend with her. So let us take note of the word quality. Quality is very important. So don't just say time. Because some men will say, you said I should stay at home. And you want time. Now I am at home. And you are still complaining. The question is, home doing what? Quality time means full attention without distraction is given to that person you are spending quality time with. 
You say today I'm not going out oh, so that you people will not say I don't stay at home. And then when you are at home, you read newspaper all through. <laughs> That's not quality time. Quality time is that you take time to bond, talk, listen, relate, give sympathetic listening. In fact, people whose love language is quality time, they desire people to listen to them. Sympathetic listening and understanding. So for you, especially the men who will say, I'm listening, while you are not listening, I have some tips for you. And I know quite well that if you can observe this tip very well, you will learn how to spend quality time. The same thing for the wives. What are the tips? Number one, when you are spending quality time with your spouse and you are discussing, please maintain eye contact. Maintain eye contact. So I will be watching the TV. So I will be reading books. Ah! Don't, honey, are you listening? I'm listening now. I'm listening. Ah, is it not my ear I'm using to hear? I'm listening. Don't worry about when, what, what I'm watching. I'm listening. No, no, no. You listen with your eyes. You listen with your ears. You listen with your nose. You listen with your mouth. You listen with full concentration. That's how to spend quality time. Then, you don't do anything else when you are spending quality time. Your spouse will tell you, darling, we need to talk. You say, okay, okay, I'm listening, be talking. No, you don't do that. If you are watching TV, you put it off. Don't even mute it. Because when you mute it, you are still watching. You put it off. That has a way of telling your spouse that he or she is important. So important that you put off what you are doing to listen to him or her. And not just only your spouse, even your children. That they have something to say with you. So continue talking. Continue. I'm listening. No. Stop what you are doing. And listen. No reading of newspaper. No watching of football. No browsing. Listen attentively. Sometimes. Those things they are discussing does not make sense to you. We are different. In our makeup. But you must build a culture of listening. Men particularly. Listen to your wives. Sometimes what they are saying is complete barbadash to you. I don't know when I, I come back from work now and my wife will be saying, Ha! Ah, you see that my colleague, uh, Joyce Lynn. And you say, which one is Joyce Lynn? Hey, that black one now, that black one that was waving you that day, you cannot even remember any black one. You just dropped her in a place of work and you left. And you can say, Ha! Ah, if you see what Joyce Lynn did, Joyce Lynn now brought a red cooler. Ah, and that cooler was matching her clothes. And you begin to ask yourself, for God's sake, what is my business with the color of the cooler of your colleague and the clothes? <laughs> it is your business, so you must listen. <laughs> you must listen. Or at least pretend to be listening. Every woman has an, a number of words she must utter in a day. So if you are outside as a husband and you are just you better preserve your mouth. So that you will have enough reserve to talk when you get home. Because you must talk with her. These are some of the little things that make tension to be in the house. This woman has been keeping, keeping, keeping. And you say, ah, this woman, you talk too much. You talk, she has to talk too much. That's how she is made. So allow her to do her talking. Because that's what makes her happy. And a happy woman is a happy home. If you don't make her happy, your home will be under tension. So, listen. Even when you don't like what she's talking about. The same thing for women. Listen to your husband's discussion. If I one of those very way to make them really feel comfortable, go and look for what they like. Maybe they like football. What stops you from asking one or two questions? Who are those playing for Man U? Who are those playing for Chelsea? And surprise your husband. Maybe your husband is a Chelsea fan or a Man U fan. And you just come and say, is this person playing? And you say, ah, how did you know? How did you know that he's a, he's a Chelsea player or a Man U player? You get his attention. These are little ways to keep pressure and tension out of your house. Number three, when you are having a quality time with your spouse, observe your spouse's body language and react. Your wife is telling you something that is paining her. 
and she's talking and she's sobbing. Say, madam, 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 please like, dry those tears, dry those tears, go straight to the point, go straight to the point. No. Allow her. If you have an achieve, give her. These little things matter. Observe body language. Observe it. And react to it. So that the person will know that you are with me in this communication. You also have to observe the emotional languages. She's saying something funny, she's laughing. Your husband is saying something funny, he's laughing. And your face is strong. No. If it's funny to him, try to at least chuckle, even if you cannot laugh. If not, you make him look foolish. Number five, you don't interrupt all the time. He or she is the one that says, ah, let me tell you as we went in the office today. At least try to listen how they went in the office. It's not when she say one line. You say, eh, you enter another line. You say another, no, 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 no. You don't talk too much. You listen more. When you have people who love quality time. They love to do the talking and they like you to do the listening. Try to listen. They are satisfied. Some people can, don't mind paying people to listen to them. A lot of these society ladies do it. Big men's wives. Their husbands are not around to listen to them. They pay young men. And they will say, I'm not here for the sex. So I just want to talk. I want you to listen and then give me advice. They don't mind paying people to listen to them. They love quality time, but they are not getting it. The only reason why you should be interrupting is maybe for clarification. In fact, there are some clarification you make, it makes the person know that you are with him or her in that conversation. When you say, ah, you don't mean it. You mean she said that to your boss? And then she will sit down and yeah, so, she said so. In fact, it makes the person feel that that communication is entering. The flow is there. Lastly and most importantly, don't ever sleep off. <laughs> A good number of our men do that. He said, the only way I can let this woman know that she's choking me up with her too much talk is for me to sleep. Don't sleep off on your spouse. Except when absolutely necessary, you are tired. And tell your spouse, I'm tired. I'm feeling sleepy. Don't just let them realize that you have slept off. What they are discussing with you is important to them. It's not bedtime story. It's not aimed at making you sleep. So avoid sleeping. Let us stop here. Ruminate on this. We have discussed the first love language, which is words of affirmation. We have seen the second, which is quality time. So in the next edition, we are going to look at the gifts. We are going to look at act of service. Then we are going to look at the last one which is touch. Physical touch. I want you to think deep. About all what we have discussed. Carry out those practicals. And see how your home can be better. With better communication. God bless you. <laughs>